Now, I have painted this one before in the past, but uh, I've got no new photographs at the moment, so I'm going back to some of the older ones. But I quite like this one. I forget which lake it is now. It's one of the pools. Hang on. Let's get rid of that. It's one of the uh, the lakes at Kingsbury. But um, what I'm going to try and do is get sort of light effect straight down the middle, get the reflections in, and it should look quite nice. Let's have a quick look at the materials. It's a messy palette, but it, it it does it works. It works better than you think it would actually. Even though there's no white areas, but it, it does quite a uh, have a go. You'll be surprised. We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, these are in crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, and light red. I got large on ransom ache, number three rigger, and a three quarter inch flat. We got a collapsible water jar with this lip comes in handy, taking a bit of water off. The large ache. Got a bit of tissue. I use uh, Cutman watercolours. Um, new design I've put on the uh, packaging now. Uh, just squeeze them out. Squeeze them out, let them to dry overnight, and you're good to go. We've got 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper just clipped to this 9mm uh, piece of plywood. So, another quick look at the photo before I start. So let's start off as usual, giving the paper a nice bit of a soaking all over, nice and even. Well, it doesn't have to be that even, but as long as it's uh, there or thereabouts, it'll stretch evenly and you'll get no crinkles then. So, with that in, let's go with uh, some uh, raw sienna, just sort of haphazardly bash it in. Clean the brush. Take the excess off on the towel, tea towel, and then let's have a bit of ultramarine just here and there, just in the gaps between the clouds. Bring that right down to the bottom, and again, I'm going to clean the brush. Um, let's try and get this light effect down the middle. Uh, what should we go with? Let's try um, some of dark, so a bit of burnt umber. Ultramarine, and then let's just, just try not to go over too much of what I've just put in. Um, just trying to darken these edges. There's a hair there, don't bother, leave it there, don't touch it yet because wait till it's dry and you won't make a mess then. So that's a bit of, you can always, if you want a bit of, a few little clouds in there or, or whatever. on this side as well. But I'll leave it there, I won't be too crazy with the clouds. Um, distant trees. Always put the furthest thing, the most distant thing goes in, the same colours as the sky because it helps with your recession, push it right back. So I'm just going to use the same sky colours Just a little bit of, bit of uh, lemon yellow, just to give it that sort of hint of, hint of green. And then while I'm putting that, I'm pulling down the reflections as well. The paper, it's still wet. And I know it's wet because I can look at it down the side like this and I can see the, the lights shining off it. So I want a bit of variation, so I'm now giving just raw sienna like that. See that's coming off nicely. Then pulling down the reflections. You see how the paper's stretching? I'm just going to let it just stretch a little bit more and then I'll uh, I'll pull it tight then and um, refix it. And you see also putting in those white clouds, you also let you get that nice bit of contrast there. 
profile of the trees against the white of the cloud. I mean, I'm squeezing around the palace here. If you go this over there. Again, you can see how it's starting to dry now because the edges are going harder. See the difference between the harder edges when it's wet, when it's going dry, and the softer edges here while it's still wet. Now, I'll just go and sort of into the lemon yellow, just coming slightly further forward. And again, put that reflection down. It's giving to water marine. See how it's getting really strong now, and again, put that reflection down. Maybe even a bit of light red to really get some variety in there, and again. All that reflection, uh, ultramarine, little bits there in front of that. And again, always putting the reflection down while I've still got the paint on the brush. So that way, you haven't got to go back then, re wet it, mess about trying to get exactly the same colour. If you do it at the same time, it makes life a lot easier. And also, if I get lemon yellow, incidentally, I haven't even cleaned the brush since I started doing this. You can see how you get all these nice variations. Without cleaning the brush. Again, always remembering to pull down some sort of reflection before I go into a different colour. It's good pines grey, it's really dark, dark in it. It's coming about too much. I want to get my finger in, but the paper is coming too far away, it's almost an inch away now from the uh, from the board, so I want that nice and flat before I do anything else. So now it's flat. You just, just suggest a few little branches and again. Coming down a few reflections. I'm just going to do something on this side as well. Lemon yellow. Bit of water paint. Brush is getting a bit too dry. Now these ones are a bit further forward, a bit closer. I know the paper's dry now, but I'm still just going to pull those reflections down. Just burnt umber or something. And there's a bank, there's a bank here now. There's a big trunk going to come out of this now. Um, I'm just dipping the very tips in so that I can go in. It's just enough to keep the ears together, really. Just enough to keep that, maybe just a touch too much that was. But just enough water to keep the ears together so you can just go like this on the palette and the ears ain't fraying all over the place. And also, and then just come off with some nice little branches. Remember that, just crisscross them over one another as well, but don't all go up in perfectly straight parallel lines. Remember, just a touch more water on the edge. Once the brush gets too dry, just dip the very tip, by the tips I mean literally the, the just the one mil at the end. Yeah. Right there. Now I'll switch to the uh, rigger brush. And again, same colour, plenty of water. I'll do 
for that side. Same again the other side. Just enough water to keep the airs together, nice and damp. Remember, I can always go like that and the water's not dripping out, I never use too much water. Now this one's going to come. There's some foreground now, so imagine this one's coming out, it's giving something like that. It always looks most effective when over the lighter areas. So you imagine it comes up like this and it goes over this sort of nice light area there. I know it's a bit scary at first, you think as if you're going to ruin it. But the only way you'll uh, improve is by uh, taking chances. Keep it nice and thin, don't splodge it in too much. Make sure you can see plenty of the background behind the tree. these trees. Um, that'll do, I ain't going to put too many in. I've got enough on the left hand side. Again, switching back to the rigger. Plenty of water, plenty of paint. And then don't hold it like a pen, just hold it at the end. Hold it at the end like that, and then just go. Just, and just flick it. Give it a little flick. Oh, do I won't get it too bad with that. Stick him with this, I ain't got to clean the brush. Um, yeah, and just, uh, what I'm going to do is give it a quick sweep. Nice, nice chisel edge. Switch to the, uh, put a few rocks in, a um, piece of card, just a bit of plastic card, anything will do. Just use the corner of the card and then it's just, just sort of, just a quick sort of flick. The paint will need to be, you know, a bit, the paint can't be too wet because it will just fill straight back in. Very easy to overdo it. If you overdo it, just paint straight over it. No big deal. Um, let's put some uh, logs in the water. So we got like a sort of log, just doing something like that, and just, it just sort of flicks up like that. Kind of reflection in there. And some other bits and pieces. Now is a uh, cut my signature on it back to the rigger brush. Um, you find a quiet corner somewhere, cut my signature on, and uh, let's compare it to the photograph. So, there's our finished painting. Let's have a look, so let's have a look at the photograph. 
So what I've tried to do is, is sort of capture like some light coming down at the centre of the thing. Um, so I've sort of got the light cloud, I've tried to darken it slightly on the edges to, to emphasise the light. The sky in it was uh, first concentrate on these background trees and bushes with the uh, reflections in there. Remember by putting the reflections in at the same time it really helps with the uh, get the getting the colours right, and also the, scraping in those trunks. Remember to uh, do the reflections as well. Helps out make the water more realistic. The scene's framed nicely with these trees on the left and right hand side, and you can see I've pushed the trees right over the lightest area of the painting, right in the middle of the white where the white clouds are. Really helps uh, with a nice create this nice sense of contrast. And then we've got our uh, foreground shore part. Again, just put it nice and simple. Just the odd little rock scraped in here and there. Very easy to overdo it with the rocks, but um, like I showed, just, just paint straight over it if you do overdo it. Um, well, thanks for watching. I hope you like that. Keep practicing. Any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.